I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. If we could stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we are starting our meeting tonight with our annual budget hearing. So I'm going to turn it over to Josh Hartford to talk about our 2223 budget. Um, you'll probably see a lot of repeat here from the last few meetings that we've had regarding budget as far as the uh, similarities in slides. So 22, 23, just aligning, uh, continuing to align with the board strategic goals, strength and collaboration among schools and families in community. We'll be adding another additional um, homeschool coordinator continuing with Parent Square and the other means of communication that the district has been using, especially more so since uh, COVID hit. And then another one of those is gonna be the capital outlay projects, uh, Knickerbocker Playground and the library renovations that we have there. I know Janelle has developed a, there's a small com uh, committee with stakeholders, staff members, community members, et cetera, on that one. Goal number two is promoting physical and mental well being of students and staff, continuing to add on and uh, replace equipment in the, the weight room at the high school. We'll be starting, we already have kind of started some of the prelim work regarding uh, potential turf replacement for 23 24. And then also adding on two additional school psychologists. The third goal would be kind of ensuring that all structures meet the physical and functional needs of the districts. We are, you know, we are currently working on capital projects. Found out today or yesterday that the SED did their prelim, both mechanical and electrical uh, review on the current capital projects. And then hopefully we'll be working toward defining the scope for the next one that we know will be much larger. I know Brian has a lot of stuff in uh, maintenance budget as well. Um, sidewalk repairs, brick pointing, stuff like that. Expanding learning opportunities for all students. Help me out. Create effective schedules and maximize opportunities. And we'll be adding additional teaching positions. There's RTI math teacher who discussed the English. Uh, librarian, potential tech teacher, but that's not right in here. That would likely come out of uh, our funding, at least for the time being. Additional English classes with the options. Um, those were more on the options regarding graduation pathways. And then the last goal was to engage students through the current applications of critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity, which align with the learning standards and incorporate meaningful assessments of student work. I know Stacy, uh, Patty, I know they've been exploring JROTC program and the classroom design challenge. That's been going for quite a few years at this point, uh, continuing along with that. Just a bunch of summary, $82,983,069 is what we're looking at for 22-23. $4.6 million increase year over year. Um, bulk of that uh, just kind of shows you better in the next slide. You can see there about two thirds of our stuff is made up, uh, or two thirds of our revenues are made up out of state sources, the largest of which would be foundation aid which is uh, 42.3 million of that 66%. Services aid, which is gonna be OCS aid, textbook, uh, software, hardware, that's about 7 million. And then building aid is, is about 4 million of the 
that makes up the biggest chunk of the state sources. Appropriated fund balance is what we're using from ideally from this year's budget to balance next year's budget. Property taxes are 21%, so you're seeing a 0.69% increase there, um, which amounts to $116,000, I believe it was, $117,000. Other revenues at $650,000. Uh, the bulk of that is from our payments in lieu of taxes, mostly from some of the large businesses, apartments around, uh, health services that we would provide to non-publics is another $85,000 in day tuition. Federal sources that is comprised of Medicaid and impact aid, that's just kind of staying flat year over year anticipated that way. So here's our variances on the revenue side. You can see appropriated fund balance hopefully is gonna be enough to, if we hold that over, stay with the, it should more than cover anticipated turf replacement in the following year. Um, and then you see the state sources there going up about so 3.9 million dollars that's because there was five million dollar increase in foundation aid however it was offset um it was 1.4 million off of our building aid because we had debt falling off so the amount of aid uh, was also reduced. Here is just a five-year snapshot of our tax uh, tax levy data. You can see it's trending downward. I want to anticipate that again next year. Um, again, with the debt falling off, we had a very low tax base growth factor. It's as low as it possibly can be. It can never go below one. It was at 1.00. Um, so that uh, also aided with keeping the uh, tax levy low. For expenses, of course, instruction. We are a school district. That's going to be our largest chunk, 44%, followed by the employee benefits at 27%. Uh, both seasons, the next highest. It just kind of gives you a, a little info or infographic, however you want to say it. Uh, it just kind of lets you visualize where our money goes and on what side. Variance year over year will. Dig a little bit further on the, the next slides for this one. Uh, for most of those, there's a drill down on the, uh, coming up, except for debt service, because we have our 2008 bond falling off. So you see that drop down 1.7 million. Um, transportation is also not on a separate slide, and that's a small increase contractually. Next year, we'll have to go out for RFP on that again as our contract ends. So you can see on the, the bars, the dark purple is the 22-23, the light purple is the 21-22, and those are both off of the left axis. On the right secondary axis, you see the variance, which is the line um, in that uh, pattern will follow for the, the remaining slides. So you see the big spike there on instruction, and Largely, it is mostly the contractual raises there where you're seeing the increase in spending on that, uh, as well as some on uh, the smart board replacements. You look at the same with computer, the CAI, computer assisted instruction, again, contractual raises, and some smart boards will be over on that side of things. Some are in with instruction. You have was it programs for students with disabilities again same thing with the contractual raises to up the vast majority of the increases that you're seeing there employee benefits is the second largest chunk of the budget you see the health insurance there we know that's a seven percent spike that's about nine hundred thousand that you're seeing on the variance medicare reimbursement also on the uptick, um, that was a 15% increase for the Medicare Part B. Of course, Social Security and ERS and TRS are all going to rise as the salaries and contractual salaries continue to rise. But TRS is also seeing a 0.75% increase for a contribution rate there.
both sees, you can see a little bit of a sawtooth on the, uh, the increases with the computer, CAI and instructional. A lot of the BOCE stuff is going to be, some of the bill is going to be split like 55%, uh, 45%. So that's why you're seeing two spikes for both of those. Largely in part, it's going to be a continuation of our one-to-one. -one. Um, the devices, it's going to be obsolescence planning for that. It's going to be part of the computer upgrade. Um, multifunction printers, as we continue to add those because we pushed them out last year not knowing at the time what the uh, what we were looking at as far as the aid and everything goes. And then our computer, just getting everything up to Windows 10, which we are very close. And you also see the OCAD, special ed, and also part of instruction. A lot of those are going to be, you see the increases there, are going to be based on the projected enrollment by and large. The last, uh, last grouping of all of the expenses is general support. You see a little bump up with personnel. There's, um, that's really where it's marked as personnel, but you'll see some legal filter in through for some of the, uh, this, this is going to be where most of that raise. I mean, that's a small 30, 30, $40,000 increase there. The biggest jump is the operation of plant and maintenance of plant. Uh, we plan on getting a new truck. Uh, we were supposed to this year, but with COVID and everything and the chip shortage, we were not able to get it. And we were trying, I think it was in November, would have been the absolute latest that it could have been in. So we didn't get that. Um, snow removal equipment. <coughs> there is grounds maintenance equipment. Uh, there's a couple of mowers. I know we have some floor scrubbers and suckers and that kind of stuff that Brian and his crew need. There's also a radio upgrade that's needed so that they can just talk over the radio throughout the whole district. It's a, I don't know if it's a repeater, extender, or whatever. Um, might work that way. So, and then again, just for the capital outlay is gonna be included in there. We have the Nick Library removing the risers, uh, looking at the flooring, playground, repair, replace. And that kind of covers that side of stuff. So I didn't know if there were any questions. Are we still um, paying towards BOCES capital project like we were last year? No. No. Nope, that was done not this year either. That was done last year. Nope. So we're all done. <laughs> okay. We still have to pay every month for the EPC, that kind of stuff. Um, as far as our revenues and our appropriated fund balances, where does that fall this year in comparison to other years? Are we taking more than we normally take or is, are we pretty on par with? Taking more than last year. It's increasing. So depending on what the percentage, we'd have to go in and calculate what the, the percentage itself is going down when we filled out the um, property tax report card. Mm -hmm. I think it was going down to 5.88%, I believe still above the 4%, but still trending in the right direction without just decimating it all at once. Okay. Anybody else? Questions? Anybody in the audience? Questions? So if I can have a motion to end our public hearing on our 2223 budget, I would interrupt. Thanks, Susie. And a second. 
Jason. Thank you. All in favor of ending our public hearing? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Okay, moving on to agenda changes. I have uh, a couple things. Um, there will be an executive section added on to the end. And um, I did have some additions to the personnel report today, so I did provide a copy of that with uh, some highlighted additions. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Any public comments tonight? Okay. Any communications? No. Okay. All right, moving on to board and staff reports, um, starting with Mr. Fairchild, Principal of Archon High School. Yes. Uh, welcome to the high school. I know you haven't gotten to be here uh, for a board meeting in a while, uh, quite a while, actually. Uh, so it's good to have you here tonight. We're going to uh, just highlight some of the really neat things that are happening here at Waterfront High School. So I asked uh, Eric Jones, I said, the splash page, just kids that are doing cool stuff and happy to be here at school, because that's what the feel is. Not every day here this year, but many days here this year. And, and I want to kind of highlight, can you all hear me okay? I, I want to highlight some of the, the neat things that are happening here at our school this year. So the first big surprise was this fall when all of a sudden, unlike even four years ago when I came here, you know, clubs had, you know, maybe a few members and there were a few clubs that didn't have any students in it this year. Club after club after club was full. And, and yearbook club, which might have five, six, eight members, 15 maxed out, because that's as many as you can have in that particular class because of the nature of the beast. Uh, class and club. Uh, different teachers, but students would come to me and say, chat, how can we start another club? Like, do these kids want to do these different things? And, and so that was a huge surprise. And if you look up there, you'll see that uh, the number of students in some of the clubs um, is anywhere from 12 to 15 consistently and more than that for some of them, obviously, but uh, it has really been a huge uh, turnaround for clubs, which sends the message to me that students were just longing to be together, longing to have a sense of belonging, longing to have purpose with friends of, of like mind. Uh, so that was just a really, really cool thing that I wanted to share with you guys that you probably wouldn't know that otherwise. Uh, next, uh, the other thing that I'd really like to highlight with you is we have staff members and students that are just taking initiative just to just to do good for the high school. So one of those groups here is our student council, and they have taken it upon themselves. They reached out to the district. They said, what is one of the issues? Well, we can't get in the bathroom half the time at the beginning of the year because so many kids coming off of uh, a year and a half hiatus out of school had taken up uh, vaping as part of their lifestyle or just gonna say a lifestyle at this point. And they go in the bathrooms and they place her in the stalls and they're vaping and people can't use the bathroom. So the student council says, said to, to us, uh, can, we, can we tackle that from a student perspective? So they have been working on posters, they've done a, a whole presentation for one of our fifth period learning lab time for the whole building. Last week that they presented, they're making some videos and they're going from peer to peer. How can we encourage, how can we educate students so that they might make some, some uh, more thoughtful choices for themselves long term? Not preaching to them, but trying to give them some, some just some good information from student to student. So I thought that was a really, just a really neat uh, perspective. Uh, next, PBIS committee, uh, our staff, our PBIS staff said, you know what? We're here for the students, but we don't have a student voice on our committee. So they created a special committee of students to look at the PIS, the, the different issues around the building from student perspectives. And this committee uh, of students with the staff has been getting survey information from students. They have this whole week, they're putting out these little public service 
uh, announcements every day after the regular announcements, they'll run a, their own little announcement. And I thought you should see one because I was just so impressed. Um, and kudos to Sarah Loudon, uh, along with some others for helping put together. She's back there, you can wave to her. Hey, Sarah. Uh, for helping us with the video. <laughs> I'm Hannah from the PBIS Student Teacher Committee. I'm here to show you what respect looks like in the halls on your way to class. Be sure to mind other people's space, walking on the right side of the hallway, similar to street traffic, limits crowding, and keeps things moving beautifully. Keep your hands and other objects to yourself. See some trash on the ground, even if it doesn't belong to you, picking it up and throwing it out for the long way and keeping our school clean and respecting our custodians. Make sure you have a pass. When a hall monitor stops you in the hall, respectfully show them your pass, and then you can be on your way. If you do not have a valid pass and are caught in the sweep, your consequence is a detention. Avoid that detention and don't skip class. Mm -hmm. And so they're just, our students are just doing these really cool things. Uh, and also, a uh, big thank you to Ms. Nicola and uh, to uh, Allison Gillen. Uh, also, heading up the PBI since this is partly their very child to have students on, on board with us. Uh, next, I think you might have all got uh, the, the, the email or the parent square about CNN. It was an interesting uh, quick story for you. I get this call one afternoon or an email, and it's um, Elliot McLaughlin from CNN. And he's like, uh, I'd like to come and do this story because I hear you guys are are doing so, just student perspective on what's happening in the Ukraine. And I'm like, um, Mr. McLaughlin, why Watertown? Why am I talking to you? Like nobody, generally people don't pick Watertown, New York. So he's like, well, that's your superintendent. He said, I put out some feelers and uh, around four drum, I put out some feelers in some other uh, big cities, our, our big uh, city school districts that are around military towns. Because that, that's the perspective that I want. And your superintendent jumped on the vent, jumped on the communications the fastest. So here I am talking to you. So long story short, he comes up, he uh, he goes, or no, first he did a phone interview with both of the teachers, um, Mr. Nicola and Mr. Bennett, Mrs. Bob Bennett. And he was so enthralled with the project that the students were doing. He's like, uh, can I come up in person and bring a photographer and do a, like the whole story? And so he did. And then to our surprise, he puts it on, he's like, he, he gives us a call, he's like, it's gonna be on the front page as in on a Saturday morning, which is actually the biggest spot you can get on a Saturday or Sunday morning, because that's when most people have time to actually read longer articles. So that's the spot we got. And uh, I hope you all had the chance to read it. If not, it's still up and it's a really cool article. Uh, but anyways, again, staff doing really amazing things and listening to the perspective of the students that Elliot uh, was able to capture is just, um, it's, it's heartwarming. It's so heartwarming, in fact, that the general, uh, the commanding general, uh, Pyatt from Watertown, offered to come and visit us and visit some students in the classes because he's just like, wow, that's just really amazing. And if I can come and be of service and meet with your students, I would be happy to do so. So he has offered to do that. Not, don't believe he's going to actually end up having the time in his schedule because he's a really, really, really busy man. Uh, but that is really just a neat precept. Uh, next, Little Mermaid Junior. Uh, we actually had a show this year, and it was Josh. How did your daughter like it? Loved it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and not only was I impressed with our students and the double staffing of it, but I was blown away by our audience, our Watertown community. They were the most appreciative audience I think I have ever seen outside of like a children's show or the church show, the church event or something like that. Perhaps even more than that. They were just thoughtful, kind, appreciative, thrilled to be there, thrilled with our students. So it was a really cool event. Uh, Scholastic Art Show. If you were at the library at the beginning of last month, uh, Watertown put on a show. You could have seen some of these pieces there. If you did not get to the art show uh, at the Farm Memorial Library, we have one coming up at uh, the Dell State Office Building next Monday. It starts the Tri County Art Show, and our students will be featured there also. So, uh, kudos to our uh, art teachers and our students. And we have amongst us back here 
a pretty famous local guy here, outstanding adult youth worker recipient, Michael Shanley. Uh, he was recognized by Cornell Cooperative Extension for his work with youth but in this, that lasting work of those relationships, of those opportunities, of those teaching events that that one of our very own uh, just does on a regular basis. And one of those behind the scenes people that's just making good things happen for students. So I wanted to recognize him uh, this evening pretty well. So. Uh, and then Jocelyn Reedy, probably you don't, this is a name you don't know. She's one of our English teachers here for the last probably three years now. She has putting out, been putting on these art contests for students. Um, students and staff vote on the work and it's for the specific theme that supports Watertown. And then she gets, she has the supplies and she has the students create the artwork and we post it around the building or it's part of the building. And we call it. The Swarton Cyclones is there, that's near the cafeteria other way posted around the building um, but that's just just really cool stuff that you probably don't get to see or think about uh, on a regular basis and lastly i just wanted to highlight i'm i'm guessing that stacy has already uh highlighted some of this with you but our work uh, with the uh, portrait of a graduate work is just so you know we're very thankful for it. thank you stacy we're truly thankful because it's really allowing us to to take what the district has done with the five-year goals of the district, which um, we'll probably extend the extend on of uh, our vision. And what does that look like? What does a graduate of Waterton High School look like? And asking community members, asking prior students that have graduated from Waterton um, High School, asking staff, asking uh, the community at large, asking educational institutions and meeting with each of them in person and saying, what should how should we be preparing graduates for the future? And gathering all that data, we're, we're starting to condense that data and look at it and explore it. And the uh, it's just very exciting. Uh, and so thank you. Just a big kudos to Stacey for helping us get there. And that ends the uh, so some of the highlights that I wanted to, to share with you tonight, but that we wanted to share with you as a building. Uh, questions, thoughts? It's great to see so many kids are getting actively involved in things around the school. So thank you for highlighting all those wonderful things. Yeah, it's really, it's just really cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on our board and staff reports, we have a discipline data report that the board has requested. Okay, so you have a lot of information this evening. I'll start off by giving you, there's a one page enrollment um, total so that you have an idea of the enrollment um, that we have from year to year. Um, and it's broken down by ethnicity. And then at the bottom, we can see the totals. And it's just important to kind of keep that at the back um, as we dig through this. You can look at data in so many different ways. So I'm going to give you a couple different views of discipline and snapshots. And I'd like to thank Tom Navinger um, at the high school for putting together one of the reports. And we'll start with that one first. And it's pretty long. I'll break it down by year. So I'd like to just walk through that and then uh, we'll move on to the second report that Stacy put together. So when you take a look at the discipline data for 2021, 2022, and you flip to that first page, again, we're going to look at this data tonight in one lens, but our PBIS teams look at data in many different ways. And as we go through just the walkthrough of Watertown High School, and then I will share with you what buildings do to really drill down. Because at the board level, I'm going to give you one view, but then within each building, we really dig into the data a lot further. So when you take a look at Watertown High School for this year so far to date, and this was done as of like the 1st of April, when you look at that total, you can see that there have been about 2,500 referrals at Watertown High School. These are 25 and these are um, not broken down. There's a, a the grand total. It's not saying that there was only, you know, 500 students that it's one to one. It's these are the total number of referrals that we've had. And by taking a look at that, it was broken down into of that almost 2,500. You can see about 991 were female and uh, 1,574 were male. 
Then you look down to the next layer and it's broken down by ethnicity. So of that 2,500, 1,631 um, were white. And then you can see straight down the list how it's broken down into each category. When you flip the page on the back side of that, it talks about all of the different kinds of um, offenses. And you can see at the very top of the chart is skipping class followed by tardy to class. And I would commend the high school staff when they looked at their data as a building and they knew that there was a problem with students being late to class. They um, want to talk just a little bit, chat about the quick policy that you guys started, uh, you and Aaron and Tom, when you noted that that was a problem, you started uh, yeah, Tom. You can take a look. We're, as you know, I've been talking about looking at the code of conduct, and dress code is something that has certainly come up. But when you take a look at the total number of referrals at the high school, for example, being 132, when uh, Tom dug into the data for the past couple of years, we're not talking about students getting suspended. So they received a referral for dress code, but when we move on, I'll show you all the different kinds of dispositions that can happen. So that takes a quick snapshot of the Watertown High School top 20 offenses. When you switch to the next page, it talks about dispositions, things like in-school restriction, other. I actually actually touched base with Tom um, earlier today to say other, you know, you've got a lot of people up there with other 448. What does that really mean? And if I understood this correctly, sometimes when you go in and you have multiple things happen, you might capture one, but then everything else is kind of clustered with other. Good summary of that one? Yeah. But you can also see with progressive discipline, you know, this list is in a random order, but there's a nice progression of dispositions uh, that the administrators can use from a warning to maybe no administrative action required and could be as simple as a little time in the office, a student conference, um, detentions, up to out of school suspension, phone calls to parents, and so on. When you take a look at the next page, it just goes into Case Middle School, and then same repeat of. So I'm going to pause there for a second to see if you have any questions on what I've shared so far. So does it show there was only one phone call to parent out of all those referrals? Is that what we're seeing? No. Do you guys want to explain that? Okay. Um, that Okay. Gotcha. I think when it comes into a suspension or something major, you're going to see parent phone calls. But sometimes if it's a first time incident, it might be a conference with a student. Again, and it's progressive. So, you know, parents aren't called for every single incident with the number of incidents that you have and the amount of time that you spend throughout the day. 
it's almost impossible to get to every single. So you prioritize with those that are higher level referrals and you address those. And then you address the others, but with dispositions that are um, going in that order. I also want you to note that we have something called positive referrals. And I don't know if one of you would like to discuss a little bit about that, because I noticed quite a few positive referrals in the system and that's awesome. The PBIS team spend a great deal of time looking over the data each month and they take a look at, for example, the students uh, that were involved um, and they take a look at location, time of day, um, and then, like you can see with Watertown High School, um, going into saying, okay, well, when we take a look at, you know, knowing that the students are targeted in class, we have to do something school-wide. But sometimes with the framework of PBIS, there are some students that fall in, most students fall into the tier one system, but then there are other students that fall into the tier two or that need a little more support or even a tier three system. Something in tier two where you have some students that are repeating, you might have in some of our schools a check in and a check out system. They build some interventions within each one of the levels of the framework to support our students. What's the big difference between in school suspension and in school restriction? Okay. With the, the numbers at the top, um, that's unique offenses, but it's not student, it's not number of unique offenses. Um, and we have the number that's the large town high school male, female, it's around 2,500 total. That's unique offenses, correct? Not students. Do we have any sense of how many of that number is repeat? <laughs> We can break that down for you further. Um, that's getting really into the weeds, but that's what the building level teams do. They break it down like that so that they can take a look at each of them. Actually, Tom, you did that uh, with student ID numbers for me, but at the board level, I, I left it pretty much real big picture tonight to just get a, a sense of where we're at. And then at some point, we can drill down even further by student. Um, and you can take a look. Some students, like, like they've said, have maybe one referral and that's it. But then there are other students that have uh, I don't know. We looked at one today with one student that had has been suspended in their high school for 28 times. So that's where we need to take a look at those tier three interventions. And that's work to be done in our district that we have started. I think we have a fairly good um, grasp, not in every building, but in most buildings on our level one. But there's more work to be done on level two and three, and that work is going to take place this summer. We'll also do a reset of level one because they're, and, and again, it's varying in different buildings, um, but we're getting that. Especially now with the pandemic, we've seen behaviors that we haven't seen pre-pandemic. So there's a lot of re review work that needs to be done as well. The other information that you have in front of you um, looks like this, it's a couple pages, and it's broken out um, by um, ethnicity as well. And this one is a little bit different. Um, Stacey, do you want to talk a little bit about this one? Sure. So this report focuses solely on um, referrals that result in a disposition of an in-school suspension on the first and second page. And then on the last two pages, it talks about uh, referrals that result in a disposition of out-of-school suspension. And this is across the district. 
So just so you can see some historical data with regard to uh, different groups of uh, students with backgrounds uh, of different ethnicities across our district, um, one of the things that we wanted to see is, is there a disparity um, amongst the represented populations in our district and the number of referrals that result in suspensions for them. Um, it's something that's of high interest at the state ed level. There's a lot of interest in research being done at the pre-K level um, as far as what does that look like in suspensions and expulsions, but we thought it would be interesting to take a look at the trajectory of that K-12 as well. Um, so you can see not only do you have you know, the school year and then the ethnicity listed, but the number of total referrals for that year within that group of students and how many students represented those particular referrals. Um, and it gives you kind of a breakdown on average, how many referrals are each student generating? Certainly when you get into, um, and I'll, I'll jump down to the um, group that is the largest representative group in our district, so it's not to single any particular uh, student out, but you can see that this year so far, we've had 1,207 referrals result in in-school suspensions for our students who identify as white, um, but that's only 390 students. And so you can see, I think there's a typo there, but. Um, that is on average that each student is getting almost three referrals. So, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's unique to each student. There could be many students with one referral. And then as Tom and Aaron uh, said, that there could be several students who have many, many referrals resulting in suspensions as well. Um, and so you can see in the last two columns as well, that it gives you the percent um, of total referrals. So if you have 1,207 referrals that result in an in-school suspension for that group, it represents 22% of all referrals for the entire district, including all referrals that have different dispositions. Um, so 22% of our dispositions are resulting, our referrals are resulting in in-school suspensions this year. And for our students who identify as white, they are representing 75% of referrals that result in in-school suspensions. And one of the things to look at when you go back to the enrollment data that Patty pointed at, brought to your attention at first, is that our, our white population right now represents about 68% of our student population. Um, so those numbers are things that we wanna dig into a little bit more. Any other? We've uh, been talking a lot about our equity work that we've been doing with Syracuse University, and we're taking a look at this and coming up with some goals for next year. And I know that some of you on the board are also participating with the boards across Central and Northern New York on the same topic. So we'll share that data with you as our team um, works our way through it to share with you and, and have you use it as well. <clears throat> the amount pre-COVID to co after COVID is insane. The difference. The difference in numbers from 2018 to 2019 to this year is more than double. And one of the things that we did was we left off the past two years because of COVID. So I asked uh, Tom, when he compiled the data, he took a look at this year to date, which was like April 1st, and then you went back several years pre-COVID, so we'd have a better comparison to share with you this evening. I was actually going to ask, were students just really good in 2013 and 2014, or was that the first year that the software was being used? Yeah, so um, school tool has taken a a time of growth for the inputting of the these referrals electronically and and honestly as much as i'd like to say this data is 100 percent accurate some of our k-4 buildings um, are still working on inputting referrals electronically the major referrals are in there electronically so the suspension data might be more close to being fully accurate than things that might be marked at, at the high school as noted or conference with students some of those are referred to as minor referrals mm -hmm. and right now many of our elementary buildings are tracking those on paper still, um, but they're working on a way to move everybody to an electronic system because in our elementary buildings for many years, only the principals were the ones who utilized the referral system online. The teachers have to be trained in how to do that as well if we're going to input everything from a minor perspective. Awesome, thank you. And to add to that, if you look back many years ago, 
the menu of choices was pretty significant. So it took a lot of work on behalf of the PBIS teams to get together and really pare that list down. And even though the list has been kind of whittled down, you can see that there are still, like when you talked about in-school restriction before and in-school suspension, there are still some things in the system that we're always going to look at and we're always going to have to, to improve on. It's also when you're looking at um, the putting in the suspensions, you know, if you don't put them in when Aaron and Tom go to do things, you have to be really careful so that it doesn't look like the student had five separate suspensions when you're kind of working with a student to put everything together. Because that could really skew the data as well. Thank you. Um, we can certainly, if you want to delve a little bit deeper into the data packet, we can obviously talk at our next meeting as well. Again, if there's other further questions or concerns about the data. Thank you. And uh, superintendent schools report. Thank you. And if there's something that you would like to see more of, just shoot me an email and I'll have it prepared for our next meeting. Um, but I'd like to thank uh, Tom and Aaron and Chad uh, for being here and sharing the Watertown High School. It is really exciting to have all of that information um, out there and that kids are getting back into what is their normal routine and really, like you said, longing for that sense of belonging to a group. So it's kind of really cool um, that we're able to move forward. And I'd also like to commend the entire high school staff for all of the work they do on a daily basis. Uh, it was really exciting. You know, we've been talking a lot about the student vaping. At first, a lot of us got together as administrators um, in the district to see what we can do. But having the kids take that on and really, you know, hit that head on with other students, um, I think it's just incredible. So kudos to all the kids who took that on. Student voice is very important. And I love that the PBIS committee at the high school um, added students to their committee. That's awesome. Um, before I move on, I just wanted to mention uh, Mr. Fairchild shared a letter from our uh, U.S. Army Lieutenant General Walter Pyatt. He was in Watertown, and so he was so excited about that CNN article when it came out. He is now, I think, the 57th director of the Army staff. So he's now, I think, in Washington, but he at the Pentagon. So he, he was so excited about that article that that's, that letter came from that. And a Major General Milford Beagle from the 10th Mountain Division who's in charge, I think he was scheduled to come. Does that sound right? And so just in case any of our military friends are listening tonight with, with the streaming, if they caught that earlier, I just want to make sure that we correct that on, on record. Um, this is Staff Appreciation Week, and I encourage students and families to thank all staff this week. Um, I put out a little Parent Square post last night asking for uh, Thursday to be designated as Thankful Thursday, and that letters and cards are always appreciated. All staff in the Watertown City School District uh, will be celebrated at the end of May at our Staff Development Day. And you are going to be asked later to make another calendar change, my apologies, but um, with two or more snow days and some of the contracts it has to give back the Friday before Memorial Day. And I would like to ask the board permission to have that apply this year as non-precedent setting for all staff members to have Friday off as a give back day. And then Thursday, the day before, would be staff development and uh, staff would be provided with lunch. So when we get to that resolution later, um, I'd just like you to take that into consideration. Thanks, Josh, for the detailed, uh, again, for the budget, the detailed and transparency with that. Great job. And then in the past couple of days, I've been out visiting. Yesterday, I was at North and I visited Mrs. Alone, who's up for tenure. And today I was at Ohio visiting Miss Minor, one of our reading teachers. And it, 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 here's what's really cool. When I came back, I was so excited. Um, and I knew Stacy would be thrilled because with our new reading series, it was really great to be in two different social studies classes in fourth grade, two totally different buildings across town. And they were actually right on pace with each other. So yesterday, uh, the fourth graders in Mrs. Alone's class were doing um, they were studying governments of various countries. They're doing a research project. 
today in Mrs. Briggs' class, the students were um, studying ethnic groups and cultures of various countries. It was like the next lesson. So it was like perfect timing. Uh, they were right in sync with each other. And that doesn't happen often, but I would give a shout out to really all of the students. I actually visited a couple of the other classrooms, the guests that we had at our board meeting last week at North. I visited both of their classrooms um, just to really meet the kids because they left right after their presentations. And I commended them for what they did last week um, in public and also their classmates, just great group of kids, whatever classroom I visited. And that's what's really happening right now. The kids are starting to find their place again, um, especially at the elementary level. They're, they're really starting to it's getting close to the end of the year, but they are just loving school and loving life. So it's great. Next Thursday, uh, Josh and I will meet with King and King and Capital Construction, and we'll have that first meeting of the, the big capital project now that state ed has given us some approval. So I'll have more information at the next board meeting on that. And then I also wanted to update you. Um, we are required to have at least 95% participation on our state annual assessments. So I just want to give you a heads up that with the grades three through eight ELA and math tests, I'm not sure that we're going to meet that participation rate. So I wanted to give you a heads up. And basically what happens is if we're notified that we haven't met that rate, we might have to come up with a, an improvement plan. Each building. And each building, right. That doesn't meet. Right, that doesn't meet. So we have to look at subgroups too to see which subgroups <laughs> didn't meet. And if, if they didn't, then here's what happens. So I will pass around um, the number of refusals that we had by grade level for both uh, the ELA and the math by grade level. And that's it for me. Um, items for consent agendas. To resolve that consent agenda items A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are hereby approved. Can I have a motion, please? Sorry. Thank you. And a second? Susie. Any discussion on that? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? That motion carries. Uh, moving on to items for board action. Whereas in recognition of staff appreciation week and Whereas the Watertown City School District would like to recognize all of our staff members for their service and creating an environment that is safe and supportive for our school community. We would like to also thank them for their continuous flexibility in helping our students to navigate the constant changes associated with COVID-19 pandemic and post pandemic life. And whereas our staff have continued to encourage and support students in developing skills as we move forward, that will help them continue to adjust and thrive in an ever-changing world. And whereas our staff have worked tirelessly to make students and families feel safe, comfortable, connected, and reassured, be it further resolved that this resolution be formally presented to all Watertown City School District staff. Can I have a motion, please? And a second. Jason. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Watertown City School District has determined and finds that Patricia Labar, Tina Lane, and Stacey Eber Congress are hereby qualified as qualified lead evaluators of principals having successfully completed the following training requirements prescribed in 8 NYCRR. Number one, the New York State test, testing standards and their related elements and performance indicators and leadership standards and their related functions. Number two, evidence-based observation techniques that are grounded in research. Number three, application and use of the student growth percentile module and the value added growth module is identified in 8 NYCRR. Number four, application and use of the New York State approved rubrics selected by the Watertown City School District for use in the evaluation of principals, including training on the effective application of each rubric to observe building principles practice. Application number five, application and use of the assessment tools that the Watertown City School District utilizes to evaluate its building principles. Number six, application and use of New York State approved locally selected measures of student achievement used by the Watertown City School District to evaluate its principles. Number seven, the scoring methodology 
utilized by the state education department and the water city school district to evaluate a principal under eight nycrr including how scores are generated for each subcomponent and the composite effectiveness score of principals and application and use of the scoring ranges prescribed by the commissioner for the four designated rating categories used for the overall rating of principals and their subcomponent ratings. Number eight, uh, specific considerations in evaluating principles of English language learners and students with disabilities. Training on the use of statewide instructional reporting system, also required by 8NYCRR, will be provided once the New York State Education Department makes available the information required for such training. This certifi certification has been issued in accordance with a process for certifying lead evaluators in accordance with the Watertown City School District's annual prof professional performance review plan. I have a motion, please. Members. And a second. Sorry. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> It resolves that the Board of Education for the Watertown City School District has determined and finds that the following employees, as per the attached, are hereby certified as qualified lead evaluators for teachers, having successfully completed the following training requirements prescribed in the 8 NYCRR. Number one, the New York State teaching standards and their related elements and performance indicators in the, and the leadership standards and their related functions. Number two, evidence-based observation techniques that are grounded in research. Number three, application and use of the student growth percentile module model and the value added growth model as defined in 8 NYCRR. Number four, application and use of the New York State approved rubrics selected by the Watertown City School District for the use of evaluation of teachers, including training on the effective application of such rubric to observe teachers practice F. Number five, application and use of the assessment tools that the Watertown City School District utilizes to evaluate its building, um, building teachers application and use of the New York State approved locally and selected measures of school achievement used by the Watertown City School District to evaluate its teachers. Number seven, the scoring methodology utilized by the State Education Department and the Watertown City School District to evaluate teachers under eight NYCRR, including how scores are generated for each subcomponent and the composite effectiveness scores of teachers and application and use of the scoring ranges prescribed by the commissioner for the four designated rating categories used for the overall rating of teachers and their subcomponent ratings. Number eight, specific considerations in evaluating teachers of English language learners and students with disabilities. Training on the use of the statewide instructional reporting system also required by 8 NYCRR will be provided once the New York State Education Department makes available the information required for such training. This cert certification has been issued in accordance with the process for certifying lead evaluators in accordance with the Watertown City School District's annual professional performance review plan. Can I have a motion, please? Ambrose. And a second? Jason. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, Patricia B. Labar, the Board of Education hereby approves the following resignations, retirement, appointments, permanent, substitute, non instruction. Can I have a motion, please? Susie. And a second? Sorry. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Resolve that the following are revised Board of Education policies are hereby approved and adopted. 0015 Title IX grievance process. 6300 leaves of absence for serious health conditions of um, or family care. 
6301, jury duty, 6302, leaves of absence, 6303, accommodating employees need to express breast milk, 6400, fingerprinting and criminal history record checks for prospective <coughs> employees, 6401, a transportation of students, 6402, drug and alcohol te testing, transportation, 6404, drug-free workplace, 6500, recognized employee collective bargaining agents, 6501, board negotiating agents, 6502, compensation and benefits, 6503, professional organizations, 6201, employee assistance program. Can I have a motion, please? Jason. And a second? Go ahead. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolved that the following clinics and camps are hereby approved as follows. Girls basketball camp on uh, June 27th through July 1st at Case School Gymnasium. Boys basketball camp June 27th through June 30th at Case Middle School Gymnasium. Um, volleyball camp. Uh, Watertown High School Gymnasium, July 6th, 7th, and 8th. Um, swim camp, week number one, um, July 11th through the 15th. Diving camp, July 18th through the 22nd. Swim camp, week number two, is July 25th through the 29th at Watertown High School. Seven on seven passing clinic. Um, is June 29th, uh, 22nd, 29th, July 6th, 13th, 20th, 27th, August 3rd, and August 10th at the uh, Case Turf. Can I have a motion, please? Sorry. I heard Lori and Susie. You got it. Okay. Any discussion on that? Quick question. Is that all done on a volunteer basis? Unlike coaching where you get paid? Some, some of it is some of it is volunteer. <clears throat> and one of the next board meetings will have a complete list on a personnel report, noting who's volunteer and who will be paid. Some of the swim clinic, uh, oh, the people that are the kids that are in the pool, mm -hmm. uh, they, they will they are at a pay rate. And then the money raised goes towards the program, that sports program. Sometimes the money raised, it depends because I read through some of those. Sometimes it might be for the t-shirt for, you know, that event and then money to go to the booster club. Booster, okay. And then the last question for kids who can't afford to want it, is there any program for that? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Are these, uh, are the coaches served the same way they are during? <clears throat> yes. Awesome. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolved that the Watertown City School District Board of Education amends the 2021-22 school calendar as follows. Friday, May 27th, um, 2022 will be a give back day per the WEA contract as the district has two or more unused emergency days remaining, which makes Thursday, May 26th, 2022, uh, will now be an early dismissal for students for the purpose of staff professional development. Okay, I have a motion, please. Corey. And a second? Ever. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolved that the following educational student trip is hereby approved. The photography club at Watertown High School will visit the Eastman House uh, Kodak Museum in Rochester. Uh, June 21st. Can I have a motion, please? Susie. And a second? Jason. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. To resolve that the following educational student trip is hereby approved. The end of the year activity for eighth graders at Case Middle School, um, Enchanted Forest, uh, Water Safari, and Old Forge, Friday, June 17th. Can I have a motion, please? Laurie. In a second? Yeah, Any discussion on this one? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolve that the following educational student trips are hereby approved. Sherman Elementary, fourth grade classes, Campo Basso, uh, June 9th, 
and both the Ohio elementary fourth grade classes to Camp Obasso on June 7th. Can I have a motion, please? Susie. In a second? Okay. Sorry, Lori. Thank you. Any discussion on this one? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We resolve that the following educational student trips are hereby approved. H.T. Wiley sixth grade classes to the Chittenango Zoo. Um, several classes, uh, Ms. Monnet, McFuskey, Bluto, Dwyer, Burke, and Schreer will go on June 7th. On um, June 13th, we'll be in sixth grade classes of Ms. Mrs. Johnson, Ward, Lazarchuk, and Eldridge. And on June 14th, uh, Richardson, Dutomi, Amel, Claiborne, and Hall. Can I have a motion for this one? Please. And a second. Members. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And that is the end of the resolution. Okay. Thank you. Um, taking a look at the upcoming dates, there was a Parent Square message today about changes in some of the concerts um, and such. So instead of mentioning those, I'm just going to direct you to Parent Square on that one because I don't want to get them wrong. You correct, Michelle corrected those on yeah, you. Oh, right these here. are correct. These yep. are correct. Yep. Sure did for you. Ooh, perfect. Never mind. Ignore what I just said. Oh, you can look at both. There you go. <laughs> Um, again, just a reminder, on the 17th um, is the our board, board budget vote and school board member election running from noon until 9 p.m. at Watertown High and North Elementary, depending on what side of the city you live on. So please get out and vote in that. And our next meeting is on a Wednesday at 6 p.m. on the 18th. And is no policy meeting ahead of that? Is policy done? Mm -hmm. No, policy is not done. So much um, yeah. I'll send them an email if I can remind you. So policy will be the 18th before the meeting? Yes. Five yeah. o'clock policy? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All righty. And then we just approved that um, Friday the 27th is no school. So staff development will be the 26th with early dismissal. And Monday the 30th? holiday um i'll go around and anybody who has anything to share or add or comment starting with jason uh nothing to know. susie um i would just like to say that i was super excited with to see that the av club is up there with highest participants as a little personal note i went to this school and 20 years ago i was a member of the av club <laughs> and mr fairchild was my advisor so <laughs> it comes full circle um, and obviously mr shamley is doing a bang up job so that's super awesome to hear um, i wanted to say happy mother's day to all of the moms around fur babies regular babies whatever you got uh, thanks for killing it out there, working hard, um, and then going home and being moms as well. And Staff Appreciation Week, what can I say? Educators, you've made the biggest impact in my life. You're my best friends. Um, you're my family members. Uh, you're the people in this community who truly make a difference. And I'm just so very thankful for all of you. Thank you. Holly. It's kind of hard to follow that. Yes. So, <laughs> um, I just thank Mr. Phil Child and uh, yes. the staff of Watertown for having us. Um, and that's it. Okay, Flurry. Thank you for having us. And it was great to see all the participation and everything that you guys are doing because that's the stuff that we don't see. So it's great to see all the positivity and not talk about negative negativity. And then um, thank you to all the teachers in our district. You, you do so much for all the kids. So thank you for that too. Okay, Ambrose. I agree with Colin, it's tough to follow. <laughs> um, thanks for hosting today. And uh, thank you to all the staff in the district for all the wonderful work. It's not always easy. And ready. Just that I don't want to be last <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I do. So noted for next time. How's that? Can we take all your stuff again? <laughs> okay, so at this time, I need a motion for an executive session for the purposes of matters leading to the appointment of a particular person. Jason. And a second. Ambrose. I heard Ambrose. 
Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. 